Hi, and welcome to Studio SN. My name is Sarah Newman, and today I'm going to show you how to do a packing tape transfer. The packing tape transfer technique is a favorite of mine because it's a great way to incorporate your photos into your cards or even onto your art journaling pages. And you can see here, I've got my photograph of my tree, and it has been um, transferred onto clear packing tape and then layered on top of a spattered background. So let me show you how easy this is to do. The first thing you need is, of course, photos to transfer. And what I tend to do is um, select my photos and then put a couple of them on one sheet. So on this sheet, I've got four photographs and they've all been sized to about three by four inches. And then I print them off onto my um, home printer. And then I take them down to my local color copy place and have them make color copies of these. And then that way I've got a nice big stack of photos to play with. So then I just need to trim out my photograph. And I've got one of my trees here. And I need to adhere my tape down. And the tape that I'm using is just a plain old packing tape that you can get just about anywhere. Now you'll notice that the tape is um, not as wide as my photo and that's okay I'm going to show you uh, why in just a second so I just need to cut off some of my tape and then put it down onto my photo now I'm working onto a craft sheet and I've got my strip of tape here and just starting slowly and carefully on one end you really want to be careful that you're not getting any air bubbles in here and then smooth it down to the other side. And I find that it helps if I kind of tack it down onto my craft sheet. Then I need to get another strip of tape. And you would think that you need to align the two strips of tape, like bump them up one to the other one, but that's not true because when you soak this in water, if you do that, then your photo will um, fall into two equal parts. So. What you need to do instead is overlap the tape. And again, just place this down, working really carefully, working out any of the wrinkles that might come up. You really do wanna get those wrinkles out of there because they will show um, in the end result. So kind of smooth that out with my finger. And then I'm gonna peel the whole thing up off of my craft sheet. You can see what I've got. I'm going to turn it over and then just trim the extra bits of tape with my scissors and go around all four sides to cut those off. And this is where it's nice to leave a little bit of a border around your photo on the printed uh, or on the paper because then that way you can simply trim the paper. Or you can fight with the tape, as I'm doing. <laughs> Let me get this out of the way. Okay, only one more edge to go. Okay. Now I have my photo with the tape on it. And the next thing I wanna do is burnish it really well. And I use a bone folder, but you could use um, the handle of your scissors. You could use the back of a spoon also works. But a bone folder is a really handy, um, tool to have on hand anyway. So I'll just grab my bone folder and really make sure to smooth this down all the way around. And you can tell on some of the darker areas of the photograph really where that gets adhered well and where there are some areas that still need to be burnished down. So okay, now I've got my tape down and it's like it's laminated. So the next thing I need to do is just turn this over, again working onto my craft sheet, and bring in some water. And I'm using a mister with this, and I'm just going to spray all over my paper, onto the paper side of my piece. And I'm really soaking it. You really want to let it get wet and then let it, I usually let it sit for a little, a little bit and really let the fibers of the paper absorb the water because then it's going to be easier when you get ready to rub off the paper pulp. And you can do this um, process by soaking this in a, a basin of water or like a shallow plastic container that also works. 
Um, I like doing it on my craft sheet because then I, I have a nice surface, a sturdy surface uh, for when I'm rubbing off all of these paper bits. And you can see where that um, photo is showing up. So this is the really exciting part of the process. <laughs> you need to do this for a while. Uh, so you may want to have some entertainment on um, TV or something <laughs> while you're doing it. And what I tend to do is try and remove as much of the paper as I can in, in one go and then let it dry a little bit. And then you can see where there are some areas that you need to re-wet and, and do over again. And you do want to make sure with these paper pulp pieces that you throw them away, don't dump them down your sink. <laughs> um, that's one of the dangers of doing this process in a, in a bucket of water is that I have heard of people who've just dumped it in the sink and then realize later they had to call the plumber and have the paper pulp removed from their drain. So you can see I've got most of the paper off of here. So you can see on the, on the reverse side. Now for some photos, like this photo for example, um, sometimes it's kind of nice to leave some of the paper on there. It gives a little bit of a ghosted effect. But if you want it really, really clear, then of course you would go back and continue rubbing and getting off all of those little pieces. So when you're done with it, let me just dry this off and set it aside. When you're done with it, your piece will look like this. So clear and then um, still a little bit tacky, which is nice because then when you get ready to put it onto whatever surface you're going to put it on, it still has a little bit of stick. And I um, put mine onto this piece of background paper that's just white cardstock and I spritzed it with dilutions and this is in the Vibrant Turquoise. And I thought it just looked would look pretty with the um, with the trees. And so here's the fun part I can say, do I want it really dark or do I want some of the lighter areas, something uh, more, you know, kind of blended. And then I'll just put my piece down on here and smooth it down. And then once again, I'm going to burnish it on here and make sure that it's on really, really well. Now, if for some reason there isn't enough stick left on my um, stickiness left on my tape. I could also, before I put it down, use a little bit of glue stick and put it just in the area that's really dark on my photograph and then it will adhere it down. You could also use brads or some other paper fastener on there too. But as you can see, it's on here and I could just trim this out and be ready to go. So let me bring back in my original card and show it to you one more time. So you can see I've got it on that spattered background and I just trimmed around it. I also added a little strip of sheet music paper and that's going underneath the photo. So it's showing through some of the tape area here and then I just um, wrapped the edges around this piece of cardstock. And I layered everything up onto various colors of cardstock. This is a piece of hemp twine that's just been folded over, knotted, and then wrapped around. And I put this piece up on foam tape because with that um, hemp twine, it tends to get a little bit bumpy. So that's how to do a packing tape transfer. Super easy and really fun. I hope you enjoyed today's segment. For more inspiration, please do stop by my website at sarahnewman.com. Thanks so much for joining me, and I will see you next time.